Now I'm going to work on a drawing or a version of the St. Joseph's Abbey round tower, which was this original image here. And this round tower is at the St. Joseph's Abbey in Spencer. So here's a further away view that shows you what the benches and the full building there and the round tower is over here. So I got a picture just of the round tower part, zoomed in. And what I'm going to do now is do a ink and watercolor version of it. So with the previous version I did crayon resist which created lines around the edges that naturally resisted the watercolor and sort of kept the watercolor colors into their sections. Now we're going to do something that looks sort of similar but since we are drawing the outside lines in ink, it does not do any sort of resist. It's not going to keep the watercolor from going into a particular area. So we have to control ourselves how we want the watercolor to be. I'm just looking for, oh there one is. <laughs> I'm just looking for one of the jelly pens. So the kind of pen I'm going to use is called a jelly roll. This happens to be a jelly roll of sticks. You can use any kind of ink you want to, but I will say that watercolor involves painting with water. And if you have an ink that runs with water, then when you paint your watercolor over the ink, you're going to end with the black ink running all over the place. So we're going to issues with that. So you want to use watercolor paper. Here, I'll move our tower image. You want to use watercolor paper because when you're painting with watercolors, the water will soak into the paper and if you use very thin printing paper, like what I printed this in, it will make it buckle and fold and get soggy and all that kind of stuff. Watercolor paper is a little thicker and will hold up to that kind of activity. So we've got an ink that will not run <laughs> when we have water painting over it. It'll knock it all smeary and so on. So we're going to start with drawing, and I'll probably draw the same kind of basic uh, castle shape that I created out of this. Got another jelly roll. <laughs> Let's see if this works any better. Here we go. Alright, so we're going to draw the bottom part of the tower structure. Part of what I like about sketches is the kind of rough feel to them. So you don't have to make this exact. Make the tower base match the tower in the picture. Then put that in. The crenellated top. in the gatehouse. And put in the high tower. Where traditionally they seem to have locked princesses. Why were they always locking princesses in tower? Why was it never or rarely princes that got locked into towers? Except of course in England where they did that every once in a while too. No fairy tales. It seemed to be the princesses that were stuck in towers waiting for someone to rescue them. I think we need to put an end to this and have our princesses able to escape from their towers and go do whatever they want to do. Alright, so I am purposely making this a little wild to add my own flair to this. Because, you know, Dr. Seuss stuff was all sort of wild and squiggly. That's part of the fun of things. So it's a nice big window. I will make this one a stained glass kind of window. Mix things up. Let's flag. I 
and check out all the components. Oh, need the horizon line. Wiggly road. And remember, if you're going to be matting or framing this at some point, that you always want to keep your images, the important parts of them, well in from the edges, because the mat and frame is going to come in and cover a bunch. So you don't want the flag to go right to the top. You always want a space in there, so that when you put the frame down or the mat down, it still doesn't cover up the main aspects of the picture. So think about it in that way. Always keep things in from the edge and have just sky or grass or something else like that go off the edge. Alright, so that was done with a pen. Uh, do I want to put the lines in? I suppose I want to put the lines of the stone in. So we'll do that. And a little lines. Where do we want to put them? So if we were doing this with a crayon resist, these would actually block out the watercolor and create white spaces for us. But because this is just ink, the watercolor will go right over it, and you'll be able to see the ink through the watercolor, but it will not resist the watercolor the way that the white crayon did. Well, Kitty's coming back again. Let's see if we can send Kitty off and prevent Kitty from <laughs> getting to things. All right, you're a very good Kitty. Are you going to have your time of saying hello while things are nice and dry? Alright, I'm going to put you down now, because I'm about to get to the painting stage. You're a very good kitty. There you go. Alright, i got a brush. I'm going to uncover the water. Put that over there. Alright, what color should I use this time? I still want to use green for the grass and blue for the sky, so let's use uh, shades of red. Alright, so this time I'm going to paint red in over here on the dry. So when you leave the paper dry and you paint with watercolor on the dry paper, your watercolor paint goes where you want it to go. It does not leave the confines of where you trush, touch with your brush. So this is the more controlled way to work with watercolors. And I like this rough feel that it has, where some parts are darker and some parts are lighter, because if you look at actual castles, as I mentioned before, they got repaired and damaged and worked on, and the ending result is that different parts of it tend to have different kinds of shading, so this makes it look more realistic and natural to have these different types of shading in it. We assume that the light's coming from up here and shining down, then it would generally be lighter over here and darker over here. So while we're doing this, maybe we put the darker sections over there. So we got a red tower number one. Let's do a darker red. Tower number two. Okay. 
I'm sort of having to paint by leaning around this tripod, so this is a little tricky, but it will get done. In a different shade of red. This is more of the purpley red. And the other one was more of an orangey red. And you don't have to stay within the lines. Part of the prettiness, if you look at sketches that have been painted in, is the way that the color sorts of plays with the lines and goes in and out of it. So. Don't stress too much about getting things exactly on the lines or not on the lines or so on. Alright. Now part of the challenge here <laughs> is that we don't have the crayon creating barriers between all the different sections. So there is a risk if I start painting the brick scene and I accidentally touch over into one of these red or orange scenes that the colors will start to merge because that will be wet and then the one I'm painting will be wet and they will blend together. So it's generally better if you work on different sections of your painting where they are not touching until they dry. So like this little door section which I'll make uh, another shade of red. Nope, that's more of a purple. That's okay. Oh, I'll put that into the flag too. Black, flag, pull. Oh, see, I touched it a little too close over there and some of the black sort of eased into the pennant. But that's all right. It gives it a different kind of look. And for example, this door is all wet. If I tried to put a dot there for the doorknob, the dot would just spread right out <laughs> into the door. So you want to let wait until things dry. So let's work on the grass for now while we're waiting for the different tower parts to dry. And I'll just be extra careful down here about leaving a little gap between where the grass grows and where the tower is so that we don't have the two merged together. Now I happen to draw my tower shape like this with the gatehouse and so on, but you can draw your tower however you want to. If you want to just make it a standalone tower, that's fine. If you want to make it a tower with dragons around it, that's fine. You can have space aliens. Whatever you want, because your picture is your vision of the world. I will right, we'll use this green this time. Put some green in there. There we go. So we are painting in the different sections of the Spencer Abbey, the St. Joseph's Abbey. And this is a fanciful version of the St. Joseph's Abbey. We started with the tower image, and then we have built on it from there. So this technique is ink with watercolor. So we are drawing the picture first in ink. And again, it's a ink that will not run with water. If this was a type of ink like a ballpoint pen or something that would run when water got on it, then it would be running all over the place because we're painting water on top of it. So you want a type of ink that is water resistant. And that way while we're doing this painting, we are not getting ink smears everywhere. 
So I'm adding in the green grass while I give those two red towers a chance to dry so that I can then paint, paint the center section of the gatehouse without having all the reds and oranges and everything blur into each other. All right. All right, so we have green grass on the bottom. Those are mostly dry. I think it might be safe to paint the middle part now. All right. So for the middle part, I think I might paint different bricks, different colors. So I'm going to put water into every other brick. And here we go. And over here. So right now I'm just painting with water to get these areas wet. And I'm doing every other brick. Now the thing with this is you have to work pretty quickly because these are going to dry back out again. And you want to get your paint into them before they dry. All right, they all seem to still be wet. Uh, we'll go with this top red. So this is called wet on wet. I made the area wet first, and then I am just touching water into it, or touching paint, sorry, into the water area. And you can see how it sort of blossoms and fills in as it wants to. Oh, but some of it's escaping into the green. This is exactly what happens if you do not. No, no. All right. All right, so the way to fix this is to find a paper towel. Well, figure out what you did with the paper towels which you had here just a minute ago. There they are. Alright. Grab your paper towels. <laughs> and dry it off quick. Because if it's dry, it won't spread. There you go. See? So, you can fix most things. So the green had already stained it, so the paper was already green, and then you just uh, dabbed off the red color, which was the color we were adding on the top. Alright, so back to the adding of the red into the bricks. So we only added water to every other brick, and that's where we are now, dabbing our red paint. This gives it a nice buried effect. Just like many types of castles have, that they use different bricks from different locations, and each one has its own unique look to it. Alright, so we've got some bricks going there. Now this should be dry enough that we should be able to add some crenellations. Now let's use some nice dark color. Let's add the little top on the other side. Let's add this red. Alright, what 
else do we have? We have the crenellations on the top of the gatehouse. I don't think we've used this red yet. Yeah, it looks more like a purple, but that's okay. What kind of color should I put in the stained glass window in the big tub? Let's put some blues. Some blues in there. Some different blues. So far, so good. A little bit of a gray pop coming down from our castle door. Right, that's still a little wet, so we don't want to put a doorknob on the door because then it will spread out just like the brick spread out into our grass before. Let's do the sky. So again, I will work on making the sky area wet. So I'm going to do this wet on wet, or I let the color just sort of blossom into that shape space. Paper is moving a little. One thing you can do if the paper moves, it, it's, in my case it's because I'm working around the camera tripod, so I'm at this strange angle. But if your paper ends up moving, you can get some masking tape other non super sticky tape and tape it down to a piece of cardboard or to the table if the table is something you can work with and that way the paper stays still you mean the one that ended in a so drop? we're making this nice and wet I'm getting this wet over here I'll we'll add some blue for the sky. Like that. And you can see that it's already starting to dry here. Kitty, yes, you are so helpful, little kitty. That's no, alright. Kitty just wants to eat the end of the brush. This is what Kitty does. Yeah, you got a bunch of glasses on the edge of your table. That's fine. Kitty Tail is helping with all of this. along the crenellations of the top of the castle. You can see some areas get a little darker and some areas get a little lighter, which can represent how the clouds are drifting across the sky. That's the beauty to me of watercolors. Look how it all has this very 
a life given to it. Some areas get lighter, some areas get darker. There's all this natural movement to the feeling of it. And I really like the look of pen and ink and watercolor together. The dark of the lines, how it comes up against the gentleness of the color and then the little areas of white. So we got some skin, a few little cat hairs in here, but I can brush those off at the end, so I will not worry about those. Alright, so we got the sky in, got the grass in, Let's see if the door is dry. Right, the door feels pretty dry. dry. I think we can risk putting in a doorknob. Make it a little bit of brown, we'll find out. I can get over the cattail, which is trying to swish into the watercolor paint. <laughs> there we go. So the doorknob actually stayed where the doorknob is supposed to be. Right, so now I'm going to try. Normally I would wait until it dried so that the video can end up sometime soon. I'm going to paint the remaining bricks in with a different shade of red. Or maybe this other shade of more of an orange. Let's go with this shade of orange. And I'm going to do these right into dry to try to keep them from running into the other ones. I'll go over here. I am manually stopping and leaving white. It sort of represents the mortar that you would naturally have with the bricks. And also I'm doing that because I want to make sure that the colors don't really run into each other. So we're going this way. And then we're going over here. I'm going over here. You know, this gives it sort of a rough look, which is appropriate for an old castle. I thought that some of the brushes, the bricks are chipping or falling out or so on. can draw whatever type of castle or tower you want and you can fill it in with whatever kinds of colors or shapes you want. And it's wholly your own creation and your own world. So there is no right or wrong. And try not to think of it in terms of good or bad, because everything that you create is a learning process, and you're learning what works and what doesn't work, and you're trying new techniques, and these are all very good things. Life is all about learning at all ages and all levels of ability. And it could be for a while that your hands get steadier, and then it could be a while that your hands get shakier. And all of that's all right. It's the way that life is. All right, so now we've got different bricks of different shapes and styles. What else might we want? Well, let's try adding a couple of little windows in here. windows. Uh, let's put like 
some strips on this, this leg. Alright, so this kind of technique is ink and watercolor technique. So again, some of the keys are you want to use a paper that will work okay with watercolor so that all this water that we've been adding to it doesn't make it super wiggly or doesn't make it weak and starting to fall apart. Watercolor paper tends to be a little thicker. And you can get it very cheaply at Walmart or Job Lot or all sorts of different kinds of places. Uh, watercolors you can get pretty much anywhere. I happen to use this um, tin that I bought empty that I then filled in with all sorts of tube paints that I wanted so I could choose which colors that I'm working with and that way if I run out of a color I can just fill that color back up again. But you can buy the um, pre-made pan tins that they have in many stores. And the type of pen that I'm using, this happens to be a Jelly Roll 6, but the general idea is that you want to use a pen that is not going to smear when it gets wet. So you can see here that I drew on it and then when I added the water it didn't smear at all. But there are some pens like ballpoint pens where if you drew on it and then put water on top it would smear the pen all over the place. So you want to use a type of ink that does not smear. And a kitty, no! <laughs> Alright, now we have a kitty print in the middle of it, but that's okay. It was only a small little kitty print. Kenny was helping to add Kitty's special little <laughs> mark on this piece of work. Alright, so ask if you have any questions about how watercolor and ink works, and you could go out to the St. Joseph's Abbey in Spencer to see this tower in person and get inspired by it. <laughs>